It's Tuesday, August the 29th, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, a former Barbados government criminologist is predicting that the crime situation would get worse if the authorities fail to adopt a different approach to fighting crime. Declaring that she was not surprised at the worrying level of gun violence in the country, Yolan Ford yesterday said the continued reliance of jailing young people was not the answer to the crime problems. In fact, the 24-year veteran who has worked as a consultant to the World Bank, the Cayman Islands government, the Caribbean Community CARICOM Secretariat, and the Inter-American Development Bank said Barbados was now reaping the results of failing to introduce proper early intervention strategies. Ford, who in 1997 produced a report entitled Criminal Risk Factors containing 20 recommendations which she submitted to government, said in an extensive interview with Barbados Today that those involved in the gun crimes and other lawlessness did not wake up one morning and decided to do so. So the first point I want to make when persons say is, well, what's happening in Barbados? Why all these shootings? What really happening here? Is I am wondering what is all of this shock and alarm about and I don't say that um, to throw cold water on persons um, discussed with the situation but only because I know that there is sufficient documentation in this country that indicates that if certain steps if certain programmatic interventions are not taken you should expect no less for the transnational organized crime specialist is recommending a comprehensive integrated crime prevention strategy. Yes, we cannot possibly have a strategy that does not involve a strong, well-resourced law enforcement element. I am just saying a strategy that carries those two components and not a serious crime prevention program that deals with early indicators of criminal behavior is flawed and it will never ever reap the type of success that we would want in terms of crime reduction in this country. This is the core of the problem as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Noted criminologist Yolanda Ford. Barbados remains on course to end its HIV-AIDS epidemic. That's according to the director of the UNA's regional support team for Latin America and the Caribbean, Cesar Nunez. Speaking at the opening of the Caribbean Cytometry and Analytical Society Conference at Amon Beach Hotel, he hailed the country's achievements in the fight against the disease as a model. This country was among the first in the region to adopt the treat-all approach initiating treatment for people diagnosed with HIV, regardless of CD4 count. In 2016, three quarters of people living with HIV who were on treatment in Barbados were reportedly virally suppressed. Barbados has made these strides with relatively little international donor funding. In the context of a challenging economic climate, the government of Barbados has committed to expanding the national AIDS response. That investment has put uh, these are a nation on track to end its AIDS epidemic. Securing the resources to respond to the HIV epidemic. The UNA's official, however, lamented that while Barbados and its Caribbean neighbors were making strides in combating the disease, too many people were being left behind. He raised concern that efforts to control the rise in infections were being undermined by ignorance, fear, and exclusion. It is because of these that we must fight for social justice. We have to uproot stigma and discrimination in our clinics and communities, hospitals and homes, and we must work to ensure that no one is left behind. Last March, throughout the world, we observed the day of non-discrimination within the health services. It unfortunately is still a reality. When we talk about social protection, this includes the young people whose right to information and services we largely ignore. It includes the men who too often get diagnosed late and the women whose vulnerability is increased by violence or poverty. 
In sports, West Indies need 322 to win on the final day of their second test match against England at Headingley. Scores, England 258 and 490 for 8 declared, West Indies 427 and at the close of play last night Barbados time were 5 without loss. Of course, that match should have started by now and of course also that score would have been different. There's regional and international news after this short break. Welcome back with news from the region now. Two of three thieves were shot dead by a man whose house they were attempting to break into in St. Elizabeth in Jamaica. The third man escaped. TVJ's Gillian Pearson reports. A hacksaw and masking tape were some of the tools the thieves used as they attempted to rob a house in Mountainside St. Elizabeth Sunday night. They managed to open the front grill of the house, but the thieves did not expect what happened next. Before they could enter the house, a licensed firearm holder challenged them. He heard strange noises coming from outside and when he went to investigate, um, three gunmen opened fire at him. Um, he returned fire from his licensed firearm pistol and summoned the police. When we came to investigate, we saw one man lying on the ground um, who appeared to be dead. He also come here and realized that on the grill there was a large wrench being used to uh, take, break the lock that was on the, on the grill. The scene was processed and earlier in the morning we recognized that there were some blood trails and we found another body further in a pumpkin field beside the house. And on the international scene, leaders from Europe's big four continental powers and three African nations met in Paris yesterday to tackle the European migrant crisis. The leaders sought to agree an action plan, notably to begin the asylum process in Chad and Nigeria. We pick up the story in this Euronews report. Getting Europe's migrant crisis under control was the focus at a summit of Europe's big four continental powers and three African nations in Paris on Monday. The leaders sought to agree an action plan, notably to begin the asylum process in Chad and Nigeria. French President Emmanuel Macron had strong words against traffickers linked to terrorism. Some groups of traffickers who traffic weapons and drugs also have links to terrorism that have made the African desert and Mediterranean Sea a graveyard. These groups have deep ties to terrorism. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.